What's going on? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Bite for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And before we start, you know, we just wanted to send out our thoughts and love to Las Vegas and Puerto Rico and the recovery in Houston and Florida. Like, come on, we are lucky. We got to talk about tech and have fun with it, but we're also aware of what's going on around us. And we wanted to emphasize the importance of having some perspective here. So let's get to it. On to the show. Everyone is trying to take a slice of the apple pie this week. Sonos debuted their new Sonos One smart speaker with Alexa integration, and Google just dropped their all new lineup of products. Now, Apple's HomePod is coming by the end of the year, but they should honestly be worried about the Google Home Max. Like, did you see this thing? It's bigger and badder. It automatically tunes to the room like the HomePod. It has the smarter Google Assistant, and that thing can be placed on its side or stood up vertically and supports dual speakers as well. Now, the only advantage Apple has is on price. The Google Max Home is $50 more, but the Home Max literally just did an emoji poo-poo on the HomePod before it even comes out. And you don't have to be an Apple fanboy to admit this. It's just better. Now, there's still a lot of follow-up to the latest Apple releases, and no, it does not include any software updates to my iPhone or your iPhone after iOS 11 continues to absolutely destroy our batteries. Now, Mixpanel says iOS 11 is at a 39% adoption rate now, but it's embarrassing. Come on, with the bugs, crashes, and alignment issues, people are still seeing. Like, I can confidently say it's the buggiest iOS release to date, and they still haven't done anything to address the battery issues. So forget a bad Apple now, it's just plain rotten. Ew! Gross. Now, iOS 11.0.2 came out to fix the phone crackling issue. We talked about that last week, but a small but increasing number of iPhone 8 Plus users are dealing with this. A bursting iPhone due to a potential lithium ion battery failure that's causing the iPhone's casing to expand and burst open. Now, Apple is aware and investigating the issue, but it's nothing widespread here, so it won't be getting a name like Battery Gate. That should actually be reserved for iOS 11. And you know what? How many of you are so mad you're ready to switch phones right now? Any of you? No? Okay, yeah, that's me too. All right, one fix that is welcome, especially for me, Watch OS 4.0.1 is out for the Apple Watch Series 3 and promises to fix the LTE handoff issues that have plagued the LTE versions when they're near recognized public Wi-Fi networks that won't work with the Apple Watch. So. Thank you for getting this out quickly, and that deserves a good apple. Yeah! See, I'm a nice guy too. Now, we talked about this issue specifically in our Apple Watch review, and you should see some of the suggestions I offered to make it better, but it's also where I received some great feedback like this. Brian Tong, the only male tech reviewer who doesn't look hella awkward running in these latest Apple Watch reviews. I'll take that. Now, Rush Serial asks, why do you keep it so loose? And Kevbo Kev says, sometimes you are annoying, Brian, but this time you are not. Um, thanks, I guess. All right, Apple has received approval from the FCC for the iPhone 10 ahead of its October 27th pre-order, passing all the requisite tests and is cleared for sale, where many of us will not be getting it in the first few weeks because of the crazy demand. So who wants to wait in line with me? Actually, I meant for me. Also, a report by KGI's Ming-Chi Kuo says the functionality and user experience of the True Depth camera in the iPhone 10 will take its Android competitors up to two and a half years to replicate. That's a long time. And that's also if Android phones want to replicate it because last time I checked, uh, fingerprint is still faster. But it also means it will take about two and a half years for Android to come out with an emojis something really worth taunting Android users about exclusively available on the iPhone 10. Now, DxO Mark has become one of the go-to sources for camera rankings for our phones because our phones are our cameras. On its release date, the iPhone 8 Plus took the top spot in DxO Mark's rankings for the best camera in a smartphone with a 94 overall. Now, that score is now shared with the Galaxy Note 8's dual lens camera as well, but both of them were just toppled by the new Google Pixel 2 that received an overall DxO Mark score of 98. Like, 98. That leaves the iPhone 10 to either tie or earn the highest score ever when it comes out on November the 3rd. 
All right, Mac Rumors was able to confirm that Apple corporate employees are testing Apple's person-to-person -person Apple Pay feature internally. It's in the iOS 11.1 update with a special device certificate that's being distributed only to employees. Now, these screenshots confirm a little bit about how the feature will look like within the Messages app to allow for quick money transfers. It's still unclear when we'll see the public launch. All right, let's announce our winners from last week's Belkin Charge Rockstar Adapter Giveaway Contest. We asked you to tell us what character was on my t-shirt from the previous episode, and the correct answer was Marvel's Mad Titan and one of my favorite characters of all time, Thanos. So, congrats go out to my peeps on Twitter, Marcel King, Nicholas De La Torre, Wilton Lamb, and Fluffy2018, who made me Marvel's big baddie. And on email, David Hot Jr. and Alexander Serpico. So, congrats to all of you, I will be in touch. But shame on you, Benjamin Andrade, who thought it was Wolverine. Come on, man, that's a bad apple. <laughs> All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can email us at theapplebyte at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.